Hello everyone, um, today I wanted to talk about Myers-Briggs and SJs and personality types and I guess as far as living with SJs and, and my kind of experience living with SJs and being raised by SJs for the most part and I guess um, dealing with them on a, you know, in a more macro level. They're 50 to 60% of the population, they're guardians, they're very loyal about dependability, about being there, and about, you know, feeling the duty and really about, you know, I guess authority and social structure and really all about that. And it's very true. <clears throat> um, I've been raised by SJs. Um, I think that most of my family members are SJs. I'm learning now that my brother, older brother's an ENTP. My, um, my mom's an ESFP, actually. Um... But everyone else, I think, is an SJ of some sort. Like, especially on my grandma's side of the family. And my um, my mom's side of the family is. And um, um, they're just very, very, you know, they're just SJs. They're just, they're just very, like, and, and I always feel like I'm betraying them in a lot of ways. I always feel like, as an INFJ and an NF, someone who's, like, you know, um, just I always feel like I'm pushing against them. I feel like I'm pushing against the brick wall all the time. Um, and it's very hard. It's been a very difficult and challenging experience for me because, you know, they just don't get it. Like, if I went to college, like, for the most part, I went to college and I went to a really good school. And, you know, they they wanted, I, I chose to be business and, like, like, a more practical thing because I would get a lot of disapproval probably from everyone in my family. Um, that as a driving force and it's very powerful. I mean, it's really hard to go against every single person in your family. Like, it just is. Um, like, if I really wanted to, like, if I wanted to, I would study philosophy and humanitarian shit and, like, humanities and, and, um, you know, sociology and shit for the rest of my life. I would totally do that. I would just love that. I would study poetry and, and writing and novels and, and anything. Like, all that kind of stuff. I love it. I love it so much. And they don't get it. They really don't get that stuff. They don't get that, like, they just so what's the point of poetry? And I'm like, oh, God, do I really have to explain what the point of poetry is? Like, do I really have to tell you why? You just don't get it. You just don't get shit, do you? Cheers. It's kind of like that we're not open-minded in a lot of ways. They're just not, you know, they're not ready. They're not really receptive to new ideas. And they're not receptive to different lifestyle choices, I think. And my biggest problem with them is, you know, I see how they are and they cause most of the drama and the problems because they stick to their own groups so much. They love their groups. They love being around and go, this is my group. I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be in the book club. I'm going to be in the, they love being in that group. My grandma is ISFJ, totally ISFJ. And you know, I think the I th and it, to me it's a very conditioning thing because everyone in my family has been conditioned to be a certain way. So I think it's a conditioning thing. I don't because there's in psychology there's this thing called conditioning, and everyone in my everyone who's raised by my grandmother is an SJ. I think and I think my mom is an ESFP and she's been raised to be an SJ, and she rebels it and hates it and fights it. It's crazy, but a lot of SJs naturally, let's say you're raised. Let's say you're raised Hindu. You're not going to deviate from being Hindu. Right or wrong, whatever you do. If you're raised liberal, Democrat, you're not going to deviate. So you're not going to rock the boat. <clears throat> if you're raised Republican, you're not going to change. You're not going to rock the boat. And I don't think that that's right. I don't think that that's right. I think you should be seeking the truth for yourself. Be yourself no matter what. Every day of the week, no matter what happens. <sighs> um, it's it's. I see groups. I just see groups and social structure and... Um, you know, they, they, the popular kids. I see the SJs as B students. I really do. I see them as the B students. I see them as, you know, like they, they, they love adhering to the norms. They love adhering to, 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 um, conventions. And they, they're like, oh, well, you're wearing, like, I really can't stand being around them because if you try to be, I try to be any bit flamboyant at all, like, wear something crazier, it's dis it's like, why are you doing that? It's like you didn't wear like a like a you didn't wear the right clothes to this this thing. And for me as an INFJ, it's been very difficult because it's repressed me in a lot of ways. Um I think that's why a lot of INFJs get we like to adhere to the rules and really, but we just can't. Like, we really just can't. And we're very we're very we're so we're so imaginative and so like 
crazy, but we just can't. We and we also respect their feelings and all that. But I just can't live like how they do. I just can't. And I, and at some point, I, I've chosen to like break free and say, "Screw this!" Like, like I can't. I can't adhere to you. I can't listen to your opinion about things. I really can't because you know what? It's just based on like you just want me to conform to the group, and I, I physically can't conform to the group. I'm my own individual person all the time. Um. <laughs> I love the other types. I just, like, it makes me think that other, I like the other types more. I probably don't like the other types as much if there weren't so feel few of them. Like, I mean, an NT, I'm like, oh my god, I love you, NT. You're so, you're awesome. You're an NT. Oh, great. You're my, like, new best friend. Like, I'm gonna cling to you and shit. And, like, you know, I love the SPs. And the NTs, the NTs fucking hate the SJs. They really do. They just go, oh god. They just say, oh god, they're so stupid. They, and, you know, like, the SPs are like, you guys are stupid. <laughs> and, like, they're like, they're like, they're like the cool kids. I think that, I just called the SPs the cool kids, like, in high school and shit. The other ones who are like, I'm getting a D, I don't give a shit. Who cares what the teacher says? Like, that, that's, but they'll get on, they don't need school and shit, and they'll just get on, and they'll, they'll do their own thing. I'm not saying they're stupid. I'm saying that they're more inclined to not adhere to the social norms, and they're more inclined to be into creative things, into visual, like, like sensory creative things, I think. Um, and I, I love SPs, and I look at them, and they're, they're, they're cool kids. I love SPs. Um, and, and that's what, like, you cause me emotional damage and pain. Um, because, as an F's, I think we have big dreams, big ideas, big hopes, big aspirations, and always get crushed. Always get crushed by the fucking SJs. It's just always, you know... I want to. I want to dream to be, you know, a, a, you know, a philosopher. I want to be something crazy, and they'll just be like, they'll just be like, that's stupid. You don't need to do that. What are you gonna do? How are you gonna get a job that way? Like that's what the first thoughts are. Oh my god. And if if we stop thinking that way, we could have philosophers be jobs. And I think philosophers should have fucking. There should be like, you want to be a philosophy like a philosopher school? Go ahead. It's it's it does happen, but it's very rare in our country. Um, yeah, I, I just noticed, I'm seeing, starting to see that they're, 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 they're gosh, I would say they're pretty gossipy about things. They're very small talk, and I have little tolerance and patience for it. Um, I have little tolerance and patience for, who did you talk to? What did you do? What did they wear in? Were you, were you driving the front seat? Were you with them? What were you doing with them? Who was there? What did she say about her? And it's just that introverted, introverted sensing shit that I can't stand. Where it's just like, it's just like, and they're very just pass oriented. I just like, it's just, they're very pass oriented and it really bugs me. And it's really hard when in your entire family is like that and you are so much different than them. And I say things like my brother said to me, like he's an ESFJ and I'm like, like he said to me like, I don't understand anything you say. And I'm like, yeah, because it's abstract and shit. And it's, like, crazy. Like, And I'm noticing myself with other NFs that, you know, we're basically all the same person. Like, we all like the same things. We just, like, it just, like, depends on how, like, all NFs are the same. Like, um, like I don't think I'm much different than an INFP. Like, they're just a little bit more, there's just a little, there's a little switch there, but we're basically the sim very similar people, or, you know, in a lot of ways, just very similar, like, very similar in the way we do our lifestyle and all that, and, like, you know, like, what we're interested into, um, <clears throat> and, um, I think it's very true, um, they're, they're very interested, and they are the bulk of society, and it's, it's, I find the most difficulty with that, they stick to their groups, and, you know what, that's not always good, they, they stick to their groups way too much. They're the ones who have clicks. They're the ones who make me feel the most isolated, to be honest. Um, I know, I'm already weird enough. I already have enough problems dealing with people, interacting with people, opening up my shell and that kind of stuff, and they want me to open up, and I can only do small talk and shit for so long. I can only, you know, I don't believe everything that everyone tells me. I don't think, you know... And for the most part, I would say that they're religious people. I would say most of the part that they were involved. They're like they're like an NF would go to church to like get so, like spiritual fulfillment or something. But they would be like the group person, like handing out the pamphlets and shit. Like they're like very into their groups and they love their groups. And as an individual person, I I can't. I don't like groups. They're hard for me to deal with. They're really hard for me to deal with. I have a really hard time dealing with them. Um, 
Let's see, anything else? But, you know, I do think there's good things about them. I really do. I really do think that they're dependable and loyal and kind and and nice and all that if they like you. <laughs> That's the problem. If they like you, if they trust you, then they'll be on your side 100% on your side, in your group, that kind of thing. Um, but you have to earn their trust. So I'm trying to learn to earn their trust and that kind of thing and really go for it with, you know, and then like at my coworker, she's like an ESTJ, I believe, or an ISTJ. She's, she fluctuate probably. But, um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, she's definitely like, I, I, I had troubles. I bowed with her a lot and a lot of things. And things got better when I started to think, don't force her to do shit. Don't force her to think abstractly. Don't force her to do things your way. Be a better manager than that. And, you know, just really, you know, let her do things slow. And then she became very loyal to me. And now, like, it's, it's, we have a good relationship. And we can talk while I'm like, she'll probably listen to anything I say. <clears throat> so, like, or, you know, not listen to anything, but, like, she's on my side. And that really helps. So, I think dealing with the SJs, like, you really can't, um, you really can't just say, hey, fuck you and disregard you. Because, like, they're just, they are. They're the bulk. You're going to encounter them. Like, I've considered moving jobs, and I'm like, I am going to encounter SJs everywhere I go. So, I just wanted to talk about that for a little bit, guys. Um, I've been struggling with it. It's been on my mind for the last little bit here. Um, I do like people like that. I like people in general. I like studying people, but I just feel like the SJ temperament, the guardian temperament, is in a lot of ways social behavior. And I think a lot of it is conditioning. And I think a lot of it is... Um, I think naturally these people wouldn't be SJs, they'd be NTs and S or SPs, given the natural way of things, but I think SJs force other people to become like them. Um, I really do believe that, I, and I noticed it. It's just, it's been hard, it's been hard growing up as an INFJ in an SJ household, and and um, um, with my, like an SJ family kind of setting, and, and, you know, the expectations they place upon you are very um, difficult and um you know, not uh, very narrow. Um, so I just think that uh, I think there's more possibilities for anything in the world, and and we can we can do a lot of different things and dream bigger. But um, I think we kind of need to get that inequality in the personality types down due to social conditioning. I would like to see more NTs. I would like to see more SPs. I would like to see more NFs. To be honest, I think it would be more balanced and and and. A more balanced world if we were all like 25%, like 25%, it just would be, but you know, that's idealism right there. So, <laughs> all right, guys, thanks for watching.